we are in Liverpool and this week we're helping a young couple make that move from renting to buying. John Mitchell and Sarah Nicholas have been renting in Liverpool for six months. It's a fantastic place to live. We love the city. It's great fun, good bars, good nightlife. and uh... It's nice to be close to the water. Liverpool owes its growth to the River Mersey, which developed the small town into a major trading capital. Today, the old industries have given way to a surge of dockside redevelopment schemes that cater to the growing trend for city centre living. But it's a seller's market in the city at the moment, and it seems there's a queue of people, all with the same budgets, all looking for the same things. So our challenge isn't just to find them the right home, but to secure it before someone else does. One of the problems we found is we've been looking at houses on the internet and we'll find them on like a Sunday night and then on the Monday morning Sarah will phone the estate agents and they'll either have already gone or somebody will put an offer in and every time we go and view houses there's always at least one offer. Mm. I go into the estate agents all the time and up on the wall is just loads and lo loads of houses and you think fantastic look at all those houses and they've got sold on them, sale agreed, under offer. But at least there's a wide variety of property to choose from. It's possible to pick up a city centre terraced home for as little as £20,000. But there's also plenty to splash out on. A house in this Georgian terrace is ten times the price. John and Sarah have been doing their homework and have a good grasp of what they want. I do a lot of driving, so I've been having a look at the areas and every time I go to a house I'm looking and going, oh, I like this street, and asking a lot of the people's homes that I visit saying, oh, when did you buy here? How much was it? So they know what they want. Can we help them get it? You've been having a bit of trouble with here. Yeah, unfortunately there's either a queue to view houses or there's a queue for offers. We're never the first to put an offer in and that's our main problem. Very competitive market here. Definitely. And you've got a realistic budget, that's not the problem. Yeah, we'd like to spend about £85,000, but for the perfect home we'd probably stretch to about ninety. Tell us about the perfect home. Well, the location's definitely important. That's somewhere we can relax in and enjoy. Let's make a start. All right, then. Excellent. Our first house is in South Liverpool, about four miles from the city centre. Aigberth has row upon row of terraces that sprang up in the 19th century to house dockers and migrant workers. This four-bedroom Victorian terraced house has been totally renovated. At just under £80,000, it's well within their budget. Got to remark on the mosaic floor. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. beautiful. It's it all adds character it's and I'm afraid does, yeah. therefore popularity. <laughs> yes. All right. I like this. I like the open plan. They've obviously knocked it through, mm. but they haven't got rid of either of the fireplaces, no. which I really yeah, like. They're lovely. With its open plan living room and four good sized bedrooms, we think it has all the space John and Sarah are after. But it also means this house is very attractive to other buyers. When we went to pick the keys up this morning, we were told there is an asking price offer. Asking price is £79,950. Right. There hasn't been a response to the asking price offer. So, where does that leave us, really? For, you well, know? it basically means that you're in the same club as everyone else. Mm -hmm. This is the asking price. They've already achieved the asking price. They haven't accepted the offer. Mm -hmm. They're obviously looking for as much as they can get. Okay. And people are still continuing to look. But because the house is £10,000 below their budget, John and Sarah do have room to manoeuvre. Come and see what you make of this, Sarah. Oh, that's nice and modern, isn't it? It's, it's contemporary, it's well laid out. Yeah, it's lovely, actually. Lots of space. We wouldn't have to spend any money in here to get to no. get going. I love the stainless steel tops. I, I always look from a kitchen design point mm -hmm. of view for the triangle between the fridge, the sink, yeah. and the cooker. Uh, and that we'll works have to perfectly. let John know about that, hey? <laughs> Who does the cooking in your house? <laughs> mainly John. Mainly right. John. Yeah. You do the washing up. Um, mainly John. Oh. <laughs> in here, you've got a really good-sized bathroom. All oh, right. Yeah. Doesn't need much doing to it, yeah. but I want you to look through here. It's one of the few rooms in the house which they haven't done anything to. But it's a fantastic laundry room. Yeah, definitely. You could have a dryer, a washing machine, and bearing in mind the kitchen's quite small, yeah, you wouldn't want it would be there. really useful to have everything in here. It's a fantastic house. I'm just a bit concerned about the location, what we're looking over onto. Yeah, and if and it's going to stay like that. Yeah. This is the last bedroom. Oh, fantastic. And it's a proper... Attic room, built when the house was built, 
But from here, you can see what's worrying them. You've got the playing field there, the school and the allotments. If they got yeah. rid of those allotments and if that school playing field was built on... Yeah, mm. you're surrounded, you're quite enclosed again, aren't you? You are quite enclosed, but what we have to find out is how likely that is. Mm. Yes. I think from the inside, it's absolutely perfect in a way. Mm. The design, the layout, the character, the size. I think it's just the, the location yeah. might just not be quite absolutely. right Absolutely, it's our only concern. Perfect house bit concerned about the location. So having discovered its location that's a real priority for John and Sarah, we're taking them to the charming area of Wavertree Garden suburb. Although just a few minutes from the city centre, this is a conservation area and has a real villagey feel. This terraced house in a quiet cul-de-sac has three bedrooms and is on the market at just below £90,000. We were rather of the opinion that perhaps the first house that we showed you was bigger than you'd need. Uh, although obviously concerns about the area. Mm. Brought you to a much smarter area, much closer to work, more expensive house. It's more compact than our first property, but still has a good sized living area and three bedrooms. We chose this house to show you next because I think it's a, a fairly good indication of what your budget buys in the preferred spot. I do like the area, obviously it's, it's, the trees are beautiful. As you walk up there's space for a car, that's really nice. But this just feels really small for us in here. Yeah. Quite similar to the lounge really, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's sort Quite of... small, particularly in comparison to the last one. Yeah. And not as modern. You've seen me cook, I need some space. That's the only problem. <laughs> These are double glazed windows, which is great for conservation of heat, but they're UPVC windows. There's a bit of a myth that these things last forever. They don't. Properly looked after wooden windows, which can be double glazed as well, would last just as long and be more in keeping with the other windows in this area. But it's not just about aesthetics. There are legal issues here as well. This is a conservation area, and if people have changed their windows within the last four years, they would have needed permission. This one looks pretty recent to me, so I hope he's got his bit of paper. One of the main things was the other house has got so much character, mm. this one hasn't got it, but I think the main problem is the room sizes. This one's only just a bit, it's just a square, you can do yeah. not much better. I just it. can't see us moving in here and this being a house for us, it just, it just doesn't feel right. This may be a better location in terms of its reputation, its area, its leafiness, but in terms of the architecture, it's not half as good for living in. So an extra £10,000 buys us a better location, but not the space and character our couple are after. With our third house, we're hoping we've ticked all the right boxes. Here we are, this is the one. Uh, just before we go in, I would just say, you're going to need to use your imagination on this one, OK? OK. okay. We're still in South Liverpool, and this student house has three bedrooms. It does need some work, but it's well within budget at £85,000. So this front room's not furnished like you might have anticipated. <laughs> not quite. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> House is lived in by students and it's obviously being used as a bedroom, as is the other living room. But yes. I want you to look up. It's got the original cornice, it's got the original picture L. Ignore the fact that it looks like a student bedroom mm. yep. and think of it as a formal drawing room, sitting room, front room, whatever you want. Yeah. It is the main reception of the house, and it really would be quite grand. Yeah, mm. yeah definitely. It's a nice, spacious room. It's lovely. It's good John and Sarah can see past the decoration, because underneath a lot of rather individual paintwork, this house has great potential. Now, John, coming through here, it's perhaps the only disappointing part of the house. This is a pretty small room, and through there, you've got a real pocket-sized kitchen. Oh, right, yes, definitely but it could be vastly improved by moving the kitchen into the dining area and converting the original kitchen into a utility room. The size isn't too bad, which is, mm -hmm. I guess, the most important thing. It's just I'm not overly keen on the, the colour of yeah. the units. They're not really for me. I prefer something more classic. The actual units could be changed very simply. Mm. I mean, you could replace these three sure. fittings for £300. That's really it, cheap, isn't it, it? It is cheap, and people think, oh, bathrooms, it's going to be wildly expensive. Mm. It does get expensive if you start moving the actual plumbing and wanting to change mm. the position of things, but uh, there's not much you do with this. Moving kitchens, changing bathrooms, and a lot of paint stripping. Are they up for it? What are you feeling? It... Um, I think it comes down to us, really, on what work we're capable of doing and what mm. time we can put into if it. If I'm going to work a full day, and then we're going to come home to a house that we've got to do 
a lot of work and are we going to be able to do that? If you're not going to be happy, there's pointless doing it, we're not doing mm. it for that, we're both going mm. to have fun. I've come but to then the long term gains are going to be... Well, do you think? I, I mean, know. The question is, if we put the money into it, are we going to reap the benefits or are we just going to reap... We put 10,000 like into it, it. 10,000 more, but yeah, you'll but, sell it easier. Yeah, but why didn't you buy the first house then? If you just want to live in it for I your guess, own comfort. Yeah. It's all too easy to think redecorating just means another lick of paint. But it often pays to go back to basics.